All right, let's talk about Vivek because uh, we've beaten up on him a little bit here tonight and uh, it's not all, he, there's, he did some good stuff last night and he's very interesting. And I was saying to the guys before you, I, there were moments last night where I thought you kind of become mesmerized by him. He's such a good speaker. He makes his points so well. He's got, I, he's like, there's a bit of theater to him that's compelling. You know, he knows how to sort of like capture your attention and deliver a line and he, like the, the rise and fall in his voice, it, it, it can kind of suck you in. Um, Van Jones felt differently over on CNN. <laughs> he, he was not, not sucked in. Here is his reaction uh, on CNN after the debate, SOT 18. And the smug, condescending way that he just spews this poison out yeah. is very, very dangerous because he won't stop Trump, but he's going to outlive Trump by about 50 years. And you're watching the rise of an American demagogue that is a very, very despicable person. Yeah. And I, I'm, I literally, I, I, was, I was shaking listening to him talk because a lot of people don't know that is one step away from Nazi propaganda coming out of his mouth. Oh, we got the N-word, Nazi, and uh, he's shaking. Vivek made Van Jones shake. Yeah, I mean, look, when, you know, the New York Times has this little thing they do after every debate where they all, their columnists rank the participants and see who they think wins and see who they think loses. And they've ranked Nikki Haley as the winner of all three debates. I don't know what they did last night. And I think Vivek always comes on last or second to last. These people... I don't think this is breaking news, are not even a little bit in touch with the sentiments and perspectives of Republican Party voters because Van Jones has cried on the air about Donald Trump and how sick and fearful he gets when he hears Donald Trump. And these are the people these Republican voters hate. So I know that, you know, I don't know who was packed there last night. I went to the first one. I know that the RNC usually gets to pick and choose who's there. So the reaction of the crowd, too, is often disparate from what American voters in the Republican Party are reacting to. But they don't respect these people. They don't like these people. And I know I think Vivek is purposely kind of seeing what Trump did and more or less following in that path. You know, I talked to Vivek two and a half years or three years ago about an unrelated thing. And I hung up the phone and I knew I said to my friends, that is going to be a politician very shortly. It was clear that he had this kind of ambition to be a public figure in that way before he was. And he is skillful and talented. And of course, he's not going to he's, his audience is not his target audience is not Van Jones and New York Times columnist. But if you want to be successful in the Republican Party, that shouldn't be. They love Chris Christie and Nikki Haley. Mm hmm. So th when Viv when he's dropping the N word on Vivek in that moment, the other N word, it was in response to Vivek, this, you know, I, I listed the things that Vivek said, like January 6th was an inside job and this. Thing. And the one thing he said in there that I will give him is the great replacement theory is a Democrat thing. It's not a Republican thing. He's 100% right about that. But the Democrats will never admit that. They want to say talkers are racist and I'm sure Vivek's a racist. Vivek, Vivek's a Nazi. And Dana Bash asked Vivek about that after the debate, take a listen in SOT 16. People when being people labeled hear great as a racist theory, or a conspiracy theorist it's a dog or uh, people who been are crystal clear. I'm the kid of immigrants. But when the Democratic Party and Biden, the leader of the Democratic Party now, as recently as 10 years ago with Mallorca sitting at his side, expressly talking about non white populations exceeding white populations, that being a good thing, and immigration policies they've advanced to achieve that result remain in Mexico, which they're not enforcing, let's have that debate rather than saying this is a dog whistle, this is going to cause violence. A lot of it grounded in truth. To be able to have that debate let, without labeling let me just somebody ask you one question, a xenophobe or a racist I'm let you go. or a let's just say, denier or anything let's else. Let's just say, and I'm not, I'm not going to use the term anymore because it, it is a dog whistle for people out there who are looking for reasons to go after people of color and and Jews. But uh, see, let's I just, just assume, let's agree just, to disagree let's on just the assume, importance of area Let's just assume that, that that was something that was happening. Is that so wrong? So, what's, so, what's wrong with so what's Dana, wrong with people? First of, of all, color let me just pause right there. Being a majority, let, in this let me just pause right there. This is a legitimate discussion for us to have. In my view, is I don't care about skin color. I could care less for skin color. Just Do you share the ideals of this country? Jews wow, wow. What did you make of that? It's such a microcosm. I, I mean, it's a perfect clip to pick because, first of all, it really drives me insane, Megan, and it has for quite a long time now. This idea that the great replacement theory is something that white supremacists like Tucker Carlson say to provoke mass murders like they tried to blame him for 
yep. in Buffalo, even though the guy left a gigantic manifesto about all the people who influenced him. And not only didn't he ever mention Tucker or anyone on Fox, there's no indication he even knew Fox News or had ever watched it, but they don't care about that. The great replacement theory is 1000% a Democratic Party idea. There are Democratic mm-hmm. Party operatives, mainstream ones who wrote books saying that the key to an enduring permanent Democratic Party majority is ensuring that we have so much immigration that it changes the demographic composition of our country. And these newly arrived immigrants will forever be Democrats and there'll be no way for us to lose elections because of these demographic shifts. So the Democrats can say that that's their plan, but then you can't point it out that that's their plan. That is insane. But I also think that there are legitimate debates about things like immigration and what the effects are that people like Dana Bash and CNN and the whole liberal commentariat have tried to say is off limits and they just scream racist and they yell at you that you're provoking violence. And that was a perfect microcosm right there of the fact that huge numbers of people, as we know, Democratic governors and Democratic Party mayors, the minute large numbers of immigrants started showing up on their door, illegal ones, they started screaming bloody murder and calling for the Biden Justice Department to do more to secure the border. But there's this idea that if you're in a neighborhood like where Dana Bash lives or people like her live and you're all ensconced and you don't have the kind of immigrants in your neighborhood that many other people do, then you can call everyone racist for caring about it because it doesn't affect you. And that is the breach between, I think, elite culture and ordinary Americans that has become so destabilizing. Yeah, couldn't agree more. By the way, speaking of Tucker, I should tell our audience, Tucker will be joining us on Monday. Uh, very excited to bring him to the show. This is the first time we've we've spoken many times privately, but this is the first time he's been on the show since he left Fox. And guess what? He has a big announcement when he comes on. So you will hear that only here. Don't miss that. Um, yeah, okay. So Vivek, it was it's kind of fun to watch him be provocative towards the left. And he, like, he really stirs up a lot of feelings. And then he stirs up a lot of feelings in the right too, but on on different issues. I don't think he, he told me after the show, he's not going anywhere. He does not plan on dropping out. I think he's in this now for other reasons because Vivek is not going to be the president this time around. And, um, you know, he's he's accomplishing something. So let's talk about, because I know you're not a Nikki Haley fan and he was her chief antagonist. DeSantis got in on the act more than ever, but Vivek was the chief antagonist last night. And I'm told by the team that this particular exchange captured one of your complaints about her. It's SOT 12. I want to go back, though, to Nikki Haley's comment from earlier that she is somehow not responding to the will of these donors. Nikki, you were bankrupt when you left the U.N. After you left the U.N., you became a military contractor. You actually started joining service on the board of Boeing, whose back you scratched for a very long time, and then gave foreign multinational speeches like Hillary Clinton is. And now you're a multimillionaire. That math does not add up. It adds up to the fact that you are corrupt. What was it about that exchange you liked? Well, the facts are true, first of all, that when she left government, she spent her whole life in government and she did struggle with a lot of personal debt, which I personally don't consider a moral failing. Most Americans at some point in their lives struggle with that. It's a very American thing. In fact, I think it's actually a good thing if you're running for president to have had that experience. But it is true that she immediately converted her political celebrity and political influence into enormous amounts of personal wealth using that Hillary Clinton, Tony Blair, now very common way that when people leave Washington, they get very rich by meeting in private with activist groups, giving speeches to them, serving on the board of Boeing. And when you look at Nikki Haley's policies, the one on which she's running, those policies completely align with the interest of all of those big donors and those corporations that made her personally very wealthy and that are now funding her campaign. Now, the question always is, the eternal question is, are they funding her campaign because she agrees with them or does she agree with them because they're funding her campaign? Usually, you can't really draw that line. It ultimately doesn't make a difference. The influence of money is so great in our politics that you might kind of morph into the kind of person that you know will attract big donors and think you're doing it because you really believe in it. But the point is, the re- there's a reason why Wall Street and why corporate donors are running to Nikki Haley because they see her as a vessel, as a tool to advance their agenda. And their agenda is not the agenda of the American people. Republican Party voters have made very clear they reject that agenda of international globalism and corporatism and militarism. That's not what they said they want in every poll and the way they're voting. 
And so I think it's an extremely legitimate question to ask, how is Nikki Haley's campaign being funded by whom and how did she get so wealthy in such a short amount of time? And I think those answers have now been revealed through investigative journalism, including some of the work we did about where her money came from. Debt. Mm, you can go to bed thinking about it, wake up thinking about it, eat your lunch thinking about it all day. High interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. And insane inflation keeps you stuck paycheck to paycheck. The system winds up trapping you in debt. Done with, with debt.com can be a lifeline. I have spoken in the past about my own experience with debt back in law school. It was bad. Well, done with debt.com has a new strategy to help erase your debt faster and easier than you ever thought possible. Here's what they can do for you. Analyze all the debt options you qualify for, minimize interest rates, cut medical bills, and reduce debt without bankruptcy and without a loan. But you need to hurry. Some debt solutions are time sensitive. Go to done, D-O-N-E, with debt, D-E-B-T, dot com. Find out how, how easy they can make it and find out if it's right for you. Done with debt. Dot com. Done with debt. Dot com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.